Good evening. I'm Michael Hogue, President of the American Pharmacists Association. On behalf of APHA and the APHA Foundation, I welcome you to the 23rd Annual Pinnacle Awards Program. We're very pleased that you're with us this evening. Now, since 1998, the APHA Foundation has hosted the Pinnacle Awards celebration and has recognized more than 50 individuals and groups demonstrating excellence and in innovation in safe and effective medication use through pharmacist patient care services. This evening, we're going to add three more exceptional Pinnacle awardees who are leading the way to improve medication use and overall health outcomes. The APHA Foundation's mission is to improve health by inspiring philanthropy, research, and innovation that advances pharmacist patient care services. We support programs and conduct research that demonstrates how pharmacists improve the quality of patient health outcomes and how they're essential members of the healthcare team. We would like to recognize Merck for providing support to the APHA Foundation Pinnacle Awards program this year. Without their support, this program would not be possible, and we do extend our sincere gratitude. Thank you, Merck. I'd like to extend a special welcome and thank you to the APHA Foundation Board of Directors for their work and tireless contributions to advancing the Foundation's mission and the practice transformation work of APHA. In addition, I'd like to thank my colleagues on the APHA Board of Trustees, to our members, our families, and colleagues of those who are being honored tonight, and everyone who's tuning in from across the country. Thank you for your continued support of APHA and the APHA Foundation. As the delivery of healthcare transforms as a result of COVID-19, the essential patient care roles and contributions by pharmacists has gained heightened attention by the public, decision makers, and other members of the healthcare team. The practice-based work conducted by APHA and the APHA Foundation has helped us tell a better story. Each year, I look forward to the Pinnacle Awards because they provide us with outstanding examples of pharmacists truly making a difference. I'm grateful for this year and past year's award recipients as their work is so vital to advancing our efforts as a profession. Now, who would have thought that we would be hosting this event virtually? But even though we're virtual, we are still going to celebrate the outstanding work of our colleagues this evening. Tonight, we celebrate three great success stories of those who've utilized their training and expertise to improve patient health outcomes. It's important that the profession recognize those who are out in front, making a difference to our profession and in society. Congratulations to the 2020 Pinnacle Award recipients and thank you to the APHA Foundation and our sponsors for hosting this celebration of innovation and quality in healthcare. Now to begin our formal presentation this evening, please direct your attention to this video introducing the goals of our Pinnacle Awards program. Welcome to the Pinnacle Awards of the American Pharmacists Association Foundation. The APHA Foundation Pinnacle Awards celebrate significant contributions to the medication use process by honoring the achievements of individuals and organizations that work ceaselessly to improve healthcare through innovative pharmacy services. This year's Pinnacle Award recipients were chosen based on their dedication to advancing patient care and for increasing patient access to pharmacist-delivered care, reducing medication misadventures, promoting the use of national treatment guidelines, or enhancing communication among healthcare team members. Special thanks relating to this year's Pinnacle Awards goes to Merck for its premier support. Those honored today truly exemplify the future of pharmacy practice. Please join in celebrating and being inspired by the recipients of this year's APHA Foundation Pinnacle Awards. Now please join me in welcoming Steve Simonson, APHA Foundation President, who will lead the presentation of the 2020 Pinnacle Awards. 
Thank you, President Hogue. I'm excited to be hosting this evening and especially humbled to lead the foundation during this time of growth and opportunity. Before we begin the program, I'd like to specifically recognize our devoted supporters and the 1953 Society contributors participating in the Pinnacle Awards this evening. We thank these individuals for, for supporting the work of the foundation to bolster innovative practice research and scholarship. Through their annual support and the generosity of all our contributors, we are leading, empowering, and innovating. We encourage you to visit the APHA Foundation website to learn how the foundation's work supports the profession's efforts to improve the health of individuals and communities. We are so fortunate that so many individuals align with our objectives and see fit to contribute to our cause. Our celebration this evening would not be complete without your participation. The APHA's foundation's mission to improve the health by inspiring philanthropy, research, and innovation that advances pharmacist patient care services is embodiment of the Pinnacle Awards program. Before we begin the awards presentation, I want to recognize the outstanding work of the 2020 Pinnacle Awards Selection Committee. These individuals had a very challenging task. As our nominees, nominees this year are all very deserving, Please join me in thanking the following individuals. Greg Baker, Laura Carpenter, Heather Lefebvre, and Wendy Weber. As our tradition, short videos are produced about each recipient and their exemplary work. The videos will be available later this week on the APHA Foundation website. When they are posted, we'll send a communication to everyone here this evening and the broader pharmacy and healthcare communities. Please refer to your program located in the GoToWebinar handout tab for more information about each recipient. Without further ado, let's begin the awards presentation. Introducing the recipient in the Individual Career Achievement category is APHA Foundation Board of Directors member, Laura Carpenter. Nominees in the Individual Career Achievement category are those who by their actions have demonstrated exceptional leadership in enhancing quality in healthcare and medication use. The award recipient must have engaged in efforts to promote quality healthcare, advance medication use, display a commitment to quality in healthcare, and lead efforts to implement improvements in medication use and overall healthcare quality. The 2020 Pinnacle Award for Individual Career Achievement goes to Dr. David Now. My passion for improving the quality of the healthcare system started when I was very young. When I was 12 years old, my grandmother moved in with my family. She was about 80 years old and had been diagnosed with diabetes just a few years before moving in with us. Shortly before she moved in, her doctor started her on insulin. She was handed a prescription for insulin and told that the nurse would show her how to take it. The nurse showed her how to inject an orange and sent her off to the pharmacy. She came home with a vial of insulin and some empty syringes. My grandmother was legally blind and was in the early stages of dementia. She couldn't see the marking on the syringe to tell how much insulin she was drawing up, nor could she remember how much insulin she was supposed to take or how often to take it. My father and I ended up taking on the task of filling her syringes each day and reminding her when it was time for the injection. As a 12-year-old boy, I knew something wasn't right about the way her providers had handled her situation. In fact, I was incredibly fired up and kept saying, there's gotta be a better way. That experience ignited the fire that has burned inside of me for my entire career. David has a career full of exceptional work in the promotion of numerous pharmacy quality measures, which has increased attention to pharmacy's medication adherence efforts nationwide. I think most people know me through my work with PQA, the Pharmacy Quality Alliance, as well as Pharmacy Quality Solutions. Very proud of the work we did at PQA and PQS. 
PQI got its start in 2006, just after the Medicare drug benefit was implemented. The administrator of CMS at that time, Mark McClellan, felt it was important to measure the quality of medication use for the millions of Medicare beneficiaries who now had a drug benefit. New's steadfast focus on medication quality has allowed him to serve as founding president of Pharmacy Quality Services, which now contracts with health plans representing approximately 95% of pharmacies in the United States. Dr. Now's lifetime work on quality medication use through appropriate use of outcomes measures is why he was selected as this year's recipient. It is truly an honor to be selected by the APHA Foundation for the Pinnacle Award. I want to thank the Foundation for this award, as well as thank my colleagues who nominated me for the award. One of the best things about receiving this award has been the phone calls, emails, and social media shout outs I have received from the many people with whom I have worked over the past three decades. Their congratulatory outreach has made me realize how many relationships I've built across my career and how much I've been influenced by and supported by many other talented and gracious people. I also want to thank my wife, Martha, and my six daughters who have supported my work and endured my countless days away from home. Every day that I am able to spend with them is truly a blessing. I also need to recognize my mother and father who taught me to aim high and to never stop learning. To all my mentors and collaborators, and there have been many, I want to say thank you for the wisdom you have shared with me and the passion you have ignited. Thank you all. Congratulations, David. Very well deserved. Introducing the recipient of Category 2 will be APHA Foundation Vice President Gary Cadillac. The Pinnacle Award for Group Practices, Health Systems, and Healthcare Corporations recognizes a significant quality improvement project in one or more of the following areas. Fostering the role of multidisciplinary healthcare teams in improving medication use, preventing and eliminating adverse drug events, developing innovations and quality improvement techniques to enhance medication use, or innovating in the management of drug therapy while significantly improving patient outcomes. The 2020 Pinnacle Award for Health Systems goes to Ohio Health. Ohio Health was selected in recognition of their work in demonstrating the value of pharmacists through patient-centered care that have led to improved clinical and financial outcomes. Ohio Health Pharmacy Services started our journey within population health in 2015 as a team of one due to an identified need. As an organization, we were focusing on delivering the highest quality, lowest cost care to our community. By late 2015, the strategy and foundation was being laid over the course of the next five years, Pharmacy Services has stayed focused and committed to three key principles. Keep the patient at the center of our care delivery model. All efforts and initiatives must generate value for our community. And lastly, we were focused on building an integrated care model, leveraging the expertise of each clinician. Our programs have directly impacted our communities by providing those accessible services to those outside the Central Ohio location. Our mix of embedded and virtual pharmacists are allowed to reach those patients at home in their communities. We also have built relationships with those patients and providers, allowing for more satisfaction in those communities as well. When I think about the patients that we've served over the past few years, one in particular comes into mind. This patient, when we started with them, their A1C was 16. They came to us with bandages on their legs, with them splitting due to fluid overload. They had a laundry list of problems like COPD, CKD, CHF, diabetes, and a ton of other ones. The first thing we did for this patient was clean up their medication list. After we were, did this, we were really able to provide a holistic approach to diabetes and wrap ourselves around the patient to give them the best care that they could have. 
Together with our team, we were able to decrease the patient's A1C from 16 to 5.7 within the year. It was a great accomplishment for the patient and something that we're all very proud of. Their Population Health Pharmacy Services Program, which serves multiple diverse populations, along with their other quality improvement initiatives, continues to expand the practice of pharmacy and optimization of the medication use process. The population health space is a huge strategy of growth for Ohio Health, and so we anticipate this team to continue to grow. The team enjoys an integrated patient care delivery model that includes physicians and care management for over a quarter million patients across the state of Ohio. We all know the impact that pharmacists can have on patient outcomes. However, we hope this inspires you to learn from our successes to take this back to your community and your role as well. Some of the key takeaways that we hope you learn from us are that you should partner with your providers and care management as well as your organization and try to find the opportunities where you can help them make an impact for their goals. We are passionate about bringing new clinical pharmacy services to patients and our health system. Blazing trails to make that happen, it's very exciting to see the impact that our team has had on actual populations of patients, and we are very proud of the work they have accomplished. Thank you for recognizing us with the 2020 Pinnacle Award. Congratulations to Ohio Health, outstanding work. Introducing the recipient of Category 3 will be APHA Foundation Treasurer, Troy Trigstad. The Pinnacle Award for Voluntary Health Agents nonprofit organizations, associations, government agencies, and public-private partnerships recognizes an organization that assists patients and their caregivers to achieve better outcomes from their medications. Examples include patient education initiatives, new healthcare delivery models in which the patient and or the caregiver figures prominently, programs that promote patient understanding, improve adherence to drug therapy, or prevent or eliminate adverse drug events partnerships between public and private entities to improve patient outcomes. The 2020 Pinnacle Award for Nonprofit Organizations goes to ONU HealthWise. The ONU HealthWise practice started in 2010 with a campus wellness program. A wellness program, which is available to all beneficiaries and students, provides participants access to knowledge about their health and health risk which empowers them to make better choices to maintain wellness and prevent disease. The program features one-on-one -on -one health coaching with healthcare professionals, education about health and wellness, and disease state and medication management. Preventative services include individualized health risk assessments and preventative medicine strategies, annual laboratory screenings and analysis, and routine screenings for hypertension, diabetes, obesity, cholesterol problems, osteoporosis, skin cancer, and a host of other chronic and preventable medical conditions. Now in its 10th year, the wellness program boasts a 82% employee participation rate and a significant improvements in health outcomes. In 2019, employees in the ONU wellness program scored better than the national average on 12 out of 13 detected conditions, 10 out of 12 self-reported conditions, eight out of 10 clinical measures, as a result, the university's five-year cost for treatment of avoidable chronic disease is approximately half that of a national average. Some of the key findings include a 76% lower incidence of undiagnosed diabetes, a 52% lower rate of metabolic syndrome, a 50% lower rate of hypertension, a 68% lower rate of dyslipidemia compared to their national peers. Students who participate in the campus wellness program have a 39% higher influenza vaccination rate, are 16% more likely to have a vision exam, 24% more likely to have a dental exam, and 69% more likely to complete a mental health screening. Ohio Northern University, ONU HealthWise, has positively impacted patient engagement and patient outcomes through their pharmacist-led interdisciplinary practice that provides a campus-wide health and wellness clinic, a rural mobile health clinic, student health outreach services, a community pharmacy, a telemedicine call center, and a drug and health information center. 
Through this work, they provide meaningful, comprehensive patient care. On behalf of the ONU HealthWise team and the Raby College of Pharmacy, thank you for this recognition. We are honored to receive the 2020 Pinnacle Award. We take great pride in the innovative interdisciplinary care models we have developed through ONU HealthWise. While each of our integrated services is unique, they share a common goal, improving access to quality health care for those in our community. Congratulations to these phenomenal 2020 Pinnacle Award recipients for demonstrating quality in the medication use process. All are making a positive, lasting impact on the standard of healthcare. Many thanks for all you do. And now, it's my honor to introduce our speaker for the annual Innovation in Pharmacy Lecture. This year's lecture is delivered by Amy Beatty, Senior Director of Pharmacy Services, Population Health with Ohio Health. During the lecture, listeners can submit questions to the GoToWebinar portal, and Amy will answer them in a short Q&A at the end. The title of Amy's lecture is Pharmacy, the Perpetual Healthcare Innovator. Please welcome Amy Beatty. Thank you to the APHA Foundation members, contributors, leaders, and supporters for continuing to foster the research and innovation that advances pharmacist patient care services. And thank you for the honor of our team being selected as the winner for the 2020 Pinnacle Award for Health Systems and for the privilege of delivering the Innovation and Pharmacy Practice Lecture this year. I am Amy Beatty, the Senior Director of Pharmacy Services, Population Health at Ohio Health in Columbus, Ohio. Speaking on behalf of the Population Health Pharmacy Services team at Ohio Health, we are honored to be recognized for improving patient outcomes and demonstrating the value of pharmacy teams in the health of populations. We are in very good company with the other winners of this year's 2020 Pinnacle Awards and congratulate our colleagues at the Ohio Northern University HealthWise program for their Pinnacle Award and Dr. David Now for being selected as the winner of the 2020 Pinnacle Award for Career Achievement. We are truly honored to be recognized alongside these outstanding winners. I have 20 minutes with you today, and my goal in this short time is to inspire, energize, and motivate you all as the perpetual healthcare innovators our patients need us to be. From the first time a natural substance from the earth was used to treat an ailment, pharmacy has ancient roots in perpetually innovating around medicinal chemistry for the clinical improvement of human health. We have seen the evolution of pharmacy from solely medicinal preparation to the clinical discipline of pharmacists recommending medication therapy to improve outcomes, pivoting again to independently managing those medications under collaborative practice and consult agreements, and even prescribing in certain states, to the pursuit of full accountability as a profession around the medication outcomes of all patients, which is where we find ourselves today. On the brink of yet another significant transformation of our profession, as we are witnessing strong pharmacy innovators across the nation lean in during this global pandemic, beginning to break down significant barriers for patients' ability to access the services of pharmacists and pharmacy teams. Perpetual is defined as never ending and occurring repeatedly. Innovation occurs in the face of challenges, finding new solutions that work better than the old. In most circumstances, our profession has not had a sustained or consistent revenue stream wrapped around some of our most valuable services in our modern healthcare environment. Hence why I am coining us the perpetual healthcare innovator. We are the perpetual healthcare innovator due to our ability to succeed in an environment that doesn't always incentivize or recognize the significant value we bring to the patient, yet our profession continues to grow and bring value to patients year over year as we globally improve healthcare in an antiquated reimbursement model 
that has not yet fully placed the patient outcomes in the center of the construct. We have not been sequestered to a deeply rooted status quo that locks us in. We have had to perpetually innovate to recreate ourselves around the needs of the patients, around the evolving complexity of pharmaceuticals, to ultimately take our place as the owners of medication outcomes for our patients. The first College of Pharmacy was established in the United States 199 years ago, now known as the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy. Here we are on the eve of the bicentennial anniversary of our first College of Pharmacy in a global pandemic, ripe with opportunity for the pharmacy profession. As this crowd knows, our profession sits at the heart of this country with nearly 90% of Americans living within five miles of a community pharmacy. If you include the pharmacist in our health systems, ambulatory practices, home infusion, specialty pharmacies, clinics, our universities, imagine what that percentage might rise to. We are the most accessible healthcare providers in the nation. We are called to be the perpetual healthcare innovator. To keep our place as the perpetual healthcare innovator, we must always keep the patients at the center, remember that every patient is personal, and find that patient care problem and innovate passionately around it. For me, keeping the patient at the center started 17 and a half years ago when I joined my current health system out of pharmacy school. The mission was focused and singular at Ohio Health to improve the health of those we serve. Throughout my career, I've had a continuous passionate pursuit to connect pharmacists with patients to improve their outcomes. As an ICU pharmacist by clinical training, I was able to personally see and experience the benefit of my efforts, my expert training in medication management, improve and impact a patient outcome right before my eyes. Watching patients fight for their lives while under my care as an ICU pharmacist was life-changing. Their vulnerability, their hopes, dreams hanging in limbo. I felt honored and responsible for being the most knowledgeable pharmacist I could be to give them the best fighting chance of overcoming their illness. Since that time, I've had the privilege of leading teams, of managing pharmacies, of mentoring others, of starting new pharmacy services, all with the mantra of orienting around the patient, keeping the patient at the center for a singular focus to improve their health. Think about patients that have had a second chance because of your professional calling as a pharmacist or a pharmacy technician, a better health outcome because of your dedication to training and always learning the newest and most evidence-based treatments and influencing the care team to make sure those treatments are in play or appropriately discontinued. If we embrace our place as the perpetual healthcare innovator and continue to center our focus on the patient, we know no bounds to what we can accomplish. COVID has been a catalyst to hasten the path we were already on. Patients at the Center is resonating with lawmakers, other clinicians, payers, and the public. We are starting to get good traction on bucking the turf wars and keeping the patients at the Center. We are seeing this through revised legislation, expedited adoption of technology, and payment reform to increase access to pharmacy services and better enable virtual care. We are causing a healthy disruption of the status quo to improve patient outcomes with collaborative care. If we lead the conversation with patient outcomes at the center, we will continue to improve patient care as we have for hundreds of years and make friends and partners in the mission while we do it. Innovation takes energy. It's hard work and takes grit and tenacity to overcome the challenges of change. To keep that passion and energy alive, we must remember that every patient is personal. Each one of us has been touched by personal stories of medications impacting our own or our loved ones' lives 
And we can't forget that. That will keep the perpetual innovator fire burning because of those that we love. When I was a child, my family moved from the Southwest to the Midwest. And once we arrived, I began to show signs of asthma. Now, albuterol inhalers were not in wide use yet. And each time I had an asthma exacerbation and failed my theophylline, which was often due to the climate change that was a trigger for me, I landed in the ED with an intramuscular terbutaline shot and several rounds of nebulizers. Not only was not being able to breathe uncomfortable, but as a kid who also didn't like shots, it was a fairly awful experience. But the first time I experienced an albuterol inhaler, once they were available during an office visit, I immediately had positive results. My, my lungs were open, I could breathe, I was amazed. I didn't have to go get a shot, and I got to take the inhaler home. This awesome blue inhaler, which they are still the same color today, 33 years later, was a magical device for me. Oh, I could have used a pharmacist to counsel me on proper inhaler technique thinking back. But once I learned how to properly use my inhaler, I never landed in the ED again as a child. Many of you have had experiences with medications that are life-changing, just like our patients. Every patient is personal. Every patient is you and me. My son experienced a seizure when he was only nine days old. And this was a decade ago now. And we rushed him to the emergency department where he was diagnosed with meningitis. Fortunately, this was viral meningitis and was mild and self-limiting. However, the care team came to discuss with us starting our son on an anti-epileptic medication for a single seizure at our home before we brought him in. They did not know how long they would keep him on therapy. There was no clear plan. The team could not speak to the potential long-term effects of a seizure medication for our nine-day-old son. And the reason being, was that the team was having that conversation with us without a pharmacist. Now, fortunately for our son, he has two pharmacist parents, and we made sure to fully evaluate the risks and benefits of a seizure medication and a self-limiting viral picture. Ultimately, we refused to start treatment, and we are pretty sure we got a naughty parent note in our son's medical record but we avoided an unnecessary treatment that could have had potentially lifelong impacts knowing the risks of cognitive impairment of these medications. We need patients to start asking to speak to a pharmacist about a new chronic medication treatment before it started. I see both successes and opportunities for pharmacy in each one of these personal stories. Innovation takes energy and passion. It is not easy to have the grit to see some of these things through. Where have you seen innovation that makes you swell with pride about our profession's dedication to the patient? The tenacity of a pharmacy team member that puts it all out there, again, where we are not always incentivized for our most value-added services. Think of those people, those teams, those who have blazed trails where there was no known path. Every patient is personal. So when we think about patients at the center, and that each of those patients are personal, they are loved ones, they are you and me. As the perpetual healthcare innovators, we are called to identify the patient care problem and innovate for an improved outcome. That may be medication therapy management decisions. That may be a better transition so that medication plans don't get lost in the shuffle. That may mean caring for patients with COVID or patients trying hard not to get COVID. That may mean helping a patient with a pre-certification or teaching them how to use an inhaler properly. There are very few places within our healthcare system where we improve patients' health without medications. Therefore, our work is timeless as the medication experts. Innovate around the problem, the metric, the opportunity. Now let's take our population health pharmacy program at Ohio Health as an example. We work with payers, employers, our health plan, our clinically integrated network, and our accountable care organization to orient around the patient 
and innovate to solve patient care problems. The key is defining the patient care problem and the opportunity to bring value forward as part of the integrated care team. Those two things need to go together. Defining the patient care problem and the value added solution that we pharmacy can bring forward. The connection point is data. To demonstrate the opportunity objectively and track that improvement to the target. What patient problem can we offer a solution for that benefits the patients, payers, employers, and healthcare system alike? Take our diabetes and asthma Ohio Health Pharmacy programs as an example. Through per member, per month payment models, we are taking accountability for the medication management and ultimately the patient outcomes of these disease states. Let's talk about how the patients win. While our program has clinically reversed diabetes in 15% of our patients who enroll with us, giving them a renewed chance to avoid the complications of diabetes. For the rest of our patients, 88% have achieved hemoglobin A1Cs of less than nine, improving their control and reducing the long-term effects of their disease. For asthma, 88% have achieved good control and plan paid related asthma costs were reduced by an average of $200 per person per year. For our general medication therapy disease management program, we saved $1.6 million in a single year by reducing ED utilization, hospital admissions, disease progression, and acute disease-related events by intervening on suboptimal medication therapy. Again, combining that patient care problem with data to link to the outcomes of interest and tracking to that target. From an actuarial perspective, these population health pharmacy programs result in significant cost containment and reduced financial exposure for the payer and the employer. The program is reducing unnecessary healthcare utilization, such as hospitalizations and ED visits, reserving those acute care settings for the patients that need it most. In our clinically integrated network and accountable care organization, Another patient care problem example revolves around access to appointments in primary care and our endocrinology offices. By offering a pharmacy diabetes management program, we can increase the number of appointments available to the primary care physicians and endocrinology, which results in more patients seen, easier access, improved outcomes. The patients, health system, payers, employers, physicians, everyone wins. The key is starting with the patient at the center and crisply orienting around, crisply orienting the innovative solution around that defined patient care problem. If your identified patient care problem and, and innovative solution doesn't improve things for the patients, the payers, the employers, and the healthcare system, then circle back and redefine your patient care problem and the innovative solution. In population health, when we start speaking about the care of populations, about taking that singular patient to all patients, it's a, it is about influencing those together. Our profession will thrive in models where financial risk needs to be managed and outcomes are prioritized because this is how we are wired and trained as a profession. If you want to see a statewide movement where this is occurring, Keep your eye on the state of Ohio as Medicaid managed care plans are starting to pay for clinical pharmacy services in Ohio. The payers are fully engaged and are recognizing that incentivizing the most accessible healthcare providers in the country solves big patient population care problems. The leadership of the Ohio Pharmacists Association, Stuart Beatty and Antonio Chacha is something to keep on your radar. Payers in Ohio are engaged and recognize that the current healthcare environment doesn't always incentivize or recognize the significant value we bring to the patient. And innovation is occurring around the patient care problems that pharmacy can address. Value-based payment models plus the metrics that drive outcomes are the path forward for our profession.
Wrapping up today, my goal is to inspire, energize, and motivate you all to embrace perpetual innovation. Where can we find the wins for patients, payers, employers, and the healthcare system alike? This is what we are good at as the perpetual healthcare innovator. In closing, you all make up our perpetual innovator pharmacy core. We must tire, tirelessly pursue innovative solutions to improve medication outcomes for our patients. By the end of this slide, I want you to personally commit to finding one patient care problem in your setting of influence to innovate around, no matter how big or small, with the patient at the center, visualizing that patient as you and me, keeping it personal. I want to celebrate your team and or your innovative solution in the years that come, perhaps with your own Pinnacle Award. So now the call to action for each group in our audience today. Students, residents, and learners, commit to solving those patient care problems in your career, not just in the moment, but pursuing solutions that solve a problem for a population of patients. Find your passionate calling, become the expert in it, and innovate around the patient care problem. Colleges of Pharmacy, how do we train our future pharmacists to navigate the complexities of value-based reimbursement models, allowing them to create services to produce those win-wins we spoke about? Pharmacy technicians, advocate for your ability to extend pharmacists and improve access to pharmacy programs. Patients need medication experts for better outcomes and you play a major role in producing that bandwidth. Health systems and group health organizations. You have the full ecosystem of care available to your patients. Innovate around the patient journey through that ecosystem. Healthcare is impossibly complex for patients to navigate. That in itself is a big patient care problem. How can we help make sure the medication outcomes are managed expertly throughout that ecosystem? Community pharmacy. Stay strong, you have been in the trenches, fighting to improve healthcare access and better medication outcomes for our nation. We need you to continue to passionately innovate around the patient as you have been. Tell your stories, show the data, provide a lens into what altruistic patient care looks like for the public and how our broken reimbursement system is disadvantaging your patients by not incentivizing your most valuable services. State and national pharmacy organizations. We need your help and support through advocacy and visibility to our legislators and to the public what pharmacy services bring to the table for improving patient care. We are going to need to do that through data and stories. This will require a strong member course, so member recruitment by producing member value will be critical. Perhaps we should consider a concerted, unified national marketing campaign to let all of our important patients know pharmacists are there for them as the most accessible healthcare provider in the nation. Payers and legislators, leverage pharmacists as providers. Patients only have better medication outcomes to gain as you will further mobilize an extensively trained workforce that is wired to innovate around the patient care problem related to medication outcomes. Employers, challenge the status quo of your health plan administrator. What are they doing differently to change the trajectory of patient outcomes related to medications? Advocate to engage and incentivize pharmacist expertise to improve the health of your employee population. We are the perpetual innovator in healthcare. We will continue with tenacity, transforming our models continuously to pursue optimized medication outcomes for our important patients. Embracing this amazing role, this tough road for our patients, a higher calling is our future. And great things don't happen when they are handed to us. They are fought for, pursued passionately, we will continue to pursue optimized medication outcomes for our patients as the perpetual innovator in healthcare. It is a rightful place. I would love to hear from you all on what large or small innovation item you will be adopting this year 
as a member of, our, a member perpetual of our Innovator, perpetual Pharmacy, innovator Corps, Pharmacy Corps. My email address my is email included address. on this slide. That is my challenge to you. Let's mark the 200th anniversary of the first School of Pharmacy in the U.S. as our most successful year of tenacious innovation yet. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, for your outstanding lecture. Your work with Ohio Health is inspiring to pharmacists across the country. We will now field questions from our listeners. Brian, have we received any questions? Thank you, President Simonson. Yes, we've received a few questions here and would welcome any others uh, as Amy is responding to these as well. So Amy, for the first question, uh, what barriers were seen when beginning to implement uh, your project and how did you combat them? Uh, thanks, Brian. So, you know, just by the nature of the new population health service, which was a newer strategic venture for Ohio Health five years ago, you know, we were moving into uncharted territory. Uh, you heard from our vice president, Charles McCleskey, who really anchored and started that program five years ago. Um, but I'll offer some suggestions for other health systems to get started in this space. Um, not really barriers, but just opportunities in a, a newly charted territory. Um, so first, you know, engage with your HR team, especially if you are a self-insured company. There are many innovative opportunities to impact medication outcomes for your own associates. Uh, this, this, in the end, will build your strength and credibility to expand unique services even outside of your own associates. You know, in addition, your HR team, they really need pharmacist help and expertise navigating the complexities of pharmacy and medical benefits plans. So this is a, a great partnership. Um, another partnership that I would definitely recommend is managed care. Uh, you know, the pharmacy teams really need to begin to advocate for the differentiated outcomes that teams with embedded pharmacists can drive uh, for the payers and the employers. Um, so you can you can help your managed care team understand the value that we offer, you know, negotiate those value-based payment models. And this helps support the growth of our important pharmacy services so our patients can have access to us. Um, finally, just, just in general, since we're talking about barriers and opportunities, you know, really don't be afraid to just start somewhere. This is new territory in the population health space for many. Uh, health systems and pharmacies that are working with health systems. You know, the care of populations is a complex world. It definitely does not happen overnight. You know, get some implementation wins and experience with maybe a single disease state or a narrowed population. You know, as we spoke about, innovate around those patient care problems. You know, we even heard the HealthWise program doing the same thing. You know, innovate around those patient care problems and then have that strong tie to data and outcomes. Uh, those two together will allow you know, folks to scale and, and overcome you know, some, some of those barriers for, for widespread implementation. Thank you, Amy. Can you, one question came in here on kind of the Ohio Health team. How many team members were involved in implementing these programs and were they all pharmacists? Sure, a great question. And that actually gives me the opportunity to highlight our pharmacist extenders. Uh, so our current patient care team consists of nine pharmacists and three technicians. So we have found that technicians greatly extend our pharmacists for our clinical programs. You know, they help gather some of the information from the patient, uh, some information related to the patient's care, and then that allows the medication expert, our pharmacist, to directly see and impact even more patients. So the efficiency gain there has been uh, amazing and we are working to lateralize that team dynamic across other non-acute care service programs that we offer from a pharmacy perspective. Uh, so that, that would be, I guess, where I'd like to comment there and really highlight the skill set of the pharmacy technicians that can grow in those clinical models. 
Great. And another question came in here around community engagement. Are pharmacists in the community engaged in that program? And if yes, how? And, and what advice do you have for community pharmacists who want to engage in programs like yours? Sure, sure. Good question. Um, so I, I'll comment that one of our ambitions this coming year and into the future years is to begin to really map that care continuum for our patients. So when we think about uh, connecting, working at connecting our full care continuum for a single disease state, for example, uh, or a population of patients across all levels of care uh, for a, a completely interconnected handoff experience for those patients, we still have some work to do there. Uh, we do have community involvement, and we definitely make contact with our patients related to their diabetes management, asthma management, using their inhalers properly. But our ambition is really to become accountable for those medication outcomes, regardless of where the patient is within our healthcare ecosystem. So that is going to involve our community pharmacy, community pharmacies as well. You know, when you think about it, this is really no small feat when we think of inpatient, urgent care, ED, ambulatory clinics, virtual care, home infusion, hospital infusion, community pharmacies, post-ICU transition clinics, specialty pharmacy, the list goes on and on and on. And, you know, we cannot drive optimal patient medication outcomes if we keep letting patients fall into these chasms between the levels of care we are providing within our global health system. So, you know, our ambition uh, going forward is to begin to map that journey and uh, really uh, begin to interconnect all of that. Uh, and it's going to be, it's going to be a tough road. It's going to involve staff training, workflow changes, EMR changes, engaging patients differently, provider relationships. Uh, but that's, I guess, what I would like to highlight related to community involvement, because it really is going to take a team and a lot of interconnectivity wrapped around those patients. Great. And you've talked about the team members, the barriers. What were some things that have been a, what was the biggest surprise for you uh, throughout the work uh, that your team has discovered in this work? Sure. Well, you know, I am new to the team as of January of 2020 and nothing like starting a COVID year and a, a new job. Um, <laughs> but I will say that I can speak personally. What I have learned is an entirely new side and opportunity for pharmacy. Uh, so personally, understanding what opportunities we have to impact care going through different routes. So you know, as an, a self-insured employer, looking at ways that we can impact and improve medication outcomes for our own associates uh, has been valuable. And I, I knew of programs like that uh, prior to getting into my role, but actually watching it uh, play out has been amazing. The other uh, surprising finding is that because of the successes we've had with our own associates, we have opportunities to expand those programs to other employers and through the Ohio Health Outreach, be able to grow our services to impact employees and other organizations and work through managed care related agreements for that. Uh, so, so that's just one example of different pathways and avenues that we can begin allowing patients to access pharmacy services in a in a different manner. Uh, so when you think about the health of populations and beginning to really wrap around responsibility for the outcomes of an entire population versus a fee-for-service uh, individual transaction, there is so much opportunity. And, and I think we have just just scratched the surface of what we can offer from a population health pharmacy services perspective. Wonderful, and that kind of segues into the next question that was submitted here on, uh, one, they thanked you for the great presentation, and then they go on to talk about innovation. Innovation can be very exciting, but to some, it can be intimidating to face dramatic change in what we do on a day-to-day. -day. How do we overcome that fear and communicate the positives that can come from innovation? 
Sure, I think that's a great question. And I think if we all think about what COVID has done to our lives, personally, professionally, what we have seen within organizations is a flattening of the decision-making, an expedited need to be able to make decisions and move forward uh, with the information that we have at hand and recognizing that the risk of inaction is, uh, is, is worse than taking a calculated, I guess, risk to move forward with a new program. Um, so from my perspective, I think about everything that our profession has been able to accomplish in a year that really broke down barriers, caused a decrease in um, almost like that, that analysis paralysis where the barriers came down, the bureaucracy was reduced, and we had to innovate and put patient care programs in play within weeks. Um, essentially speeding up uh, when you think about even our virtual care, um, our telepharmacy services, speeding up the, the, the path we were already on um, and catalyzing our ability to implement. So innovation is hard, you know, especially in large organizations that have many, many layers of decision making and trying to light that burning platform of change, uh, similar to how COVID did this year, I think is, is really important and helps to break down those barriers, increase the speed of decision-making, increase the risk tolerance within reason. Of course, we always need to put quality and patient safety at the center, um, but we need to be able to implement rapidly, um, I think is a way to keep that innovation fire burning. All right, and you mentioned uh, COVID a few times throughout your presentation. A couple questions came in around, uh, do you anticipate increased vaccination uh, across all vaccinations, not just COVID, uh, to be continuing for a uh, continuing target for pharmacist support? Uh, along with that, can you expand on any uh, telehealth or telepharmacy operations or, or digital health technology that, that you've used uh, amidst COVID as well? Sure. Um, so with regard to vaccinations, we've talked about how pharmacists are the most accessible health care providers in the country. Um, as we were as we spoke about in the lecture, you know, almost 90 percent of our American citizens live within five miles of a community pharmacy. And if we add in our health systems, universities, ambulatory clinics, et cetera, that percentage grows even beyond that. So I believe that pharmacists play a large role in the health and wellness and well being of our populations within this country. And I believe that vaccination is a big part of that. Uh, as we've seen with a pandemic that has really rocked our world and the historical pandemics that you know, we've experienced, maybe not in our lifetimes, but understanding what vaccination can do to bring the world into, back into the normal that we, that we would like. Um, as far as telehealth is concerned, we definitely saw uptake of telehealth and a lot of innovative change. We've talked a lot about population health here on this lecture, but uh, you know, from an inpatient environment even, we were using telehealth to help extend our pharmacists. You know, there was a chance that we would have to open an alternate site of care in our convention center to handle the surge of inpatients that would have come in had our COVID curve not not flattened within the state of Ohio. Uh, and we were definitely leveraging technology fully to be able to even extend our ICU pharmacists through the ability to use our EICU cameras and equipment and even speakers to speak in and talk to the nurses and physicians uh, that are part of the care team that if we were not able to be physically present uh, due to just the number of patients that we would have surged with. So that's just one small example of many of using telehealth and virtual uh, technology to increase access and bring the medication experts to the patient, to the bedside and help the care team make good, good choices for our medications. Thank you, Amy. And uh, in the comments here, I, I did receive a request to unmute the line of Scott Knorr to uh, provide some thanks as well. So Scott, you should be unmuted. Fantastic. Can you hear me, Brian? Yes, we can. 
Great, great. Well, I'm Scott Kenor. I'm the 13th CEO of the American Pharmacists Association. And I want to say greetings from the world home of pharmacy. Our, our headquarters, as, as some of you know, is the only privately owned building on the National Mall. It's, it's truly a national treasure. And I really wish you could be here to celebrate in person. So I'm, I'm going to personally give you a rain check and I look forward to hosting you when it's safe to do so here on our historic terrace. Uh, you've heard from our president, Michael Hogue, from our board president and other board members of the foundation thanking you. I wanted to personally congratulate all of our winners, the entire ONU HealthWise team and the Ohio Health Population Pharmacy team uh, on your innovation. And uh, it, it's, it's truly inspiring to see what you've done for our patients. And, and speaking of inspiring, I want to thank Amy for representing all of our Pinnacle Award winners with that visionary and inspiring address. Congratulations to all of you and for what you do for our profession and our patients. Brian, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you, Scott. And with that, there were many other questions that did come in as well. So we're gonna to try to relay those to Amy for additional follow-up mm -hmm. after this recording. Uh, but at this time, I will turn it back over to APHA Foundation President Steve Simonson for some closing remarks. Thank you, Brian. And finally, my personal thanks to our industry supporter, Merck, for their support of the 2020 APHA Foundation Pinnacle Awards Program. The foundation is very fortunate to have individuals, foundations, and corporations who regularly contribute to our research, scholarships, programs, projects, and special initiatives. And many of you who joined us this evening from across the country and for your continuous support of the foundation. It is your investment in our mission that keeps the organization on solid footing. We are humbled by your support and we are forever grateful. Thank you for being with us today to celebrate the outstanding professional contributions, contributions of the 2020 Pinnacle Award recipients. And thank you for your continued commitment to demonstrating how pharmacists improve healthcare. Thank you.